Hi. A couple weeks ago, a list came out from ESPN. Actually, it was the undefeated, but they're part of ESPN. That named the top 50 greatest black athletes ever. And, okay, let's just get it out the way. It was an abomination. It was an abomination for mainly one reason, that being the criteria and the people who they reached out to to do the voting. You know, one of the problems when you get something like this is you get a lot of people who vote for folks around their age or people that they know who have done something during the time they've been alive. So there are a lot of people who made the list who really should not have been anywhere close. And it doesn't mean that they're not good athletes. They're just not even in the top 50. Shouldn't be there. So I basically wrote them all down so I could mention some of these people. And then after I mentioned some of the folks who I don't even believe should be there, I'm going to give my top 15, some of which are on this list. And some of them, a lot of people have never heard of, or maybe not, they haven't really thought about it in a long time, but they really should. So let's look at this list here. Derek Jeter made it at number 47. Come on, really, Derek Jeter? <laughs> Derek Jeter, I hate to say this, he's not even a first ballot uh, Hall of Famer. It's not going to happen. Doesn't mean he wasn't good, but he's not going to make it on the first ballot. Just not going to happen. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan just retired a couple years ago. Yes, Tim Duncan had a wonderful career, but Tim Duncan never really led the league in anything. Yes, he won some a couple of MVPs. Not going to take it away from him. Uh, his team you know, won a lot of championships, but greatest? Mm-mm. Maybe greatest power forward, but greatest? No. But he only came in at number 50. Um, Joe Frazier. You know what? That's a tough call. I don't think I would have had Joe Frazier in my top 50. No. Wouldn't have happened. A lot of boxers better than him. I mean, Sugar Ray Robinson didn't make the list of 50. Come on, really? Sugar Ray Robinson won multiple championships. He won over 100 fights in his career. No, not even close. Let's see, who else we got on this list here? Uh, <laughs> uh, Steph Curry. People, are you serious? Yes, the guys won two MVPs. You know what? LeBron should make this list. LeBron has been in seven straight finals. He's won multiple MVPs. Uh, come on, he's the most dominant player in the league right now. How does Steph Curry not only end up on this list, but ahead of LeBron James? That's ridiculous. Uh, who else do we have on here? <sighs> I'm going to beat up, this isn't fair, I'm going to beat up Gabby Douglas and Simone Biles. They both made the top 10. Come on. Yes, great Olympians. I love both of them. Top 10 of all time? No, 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 no. Just no. This is horrible. Horrible list. I, I just hate to say that. Some of the others, you know what? Depending on how your thinking process or whatever, it's hard to negate some of these people being in the top 50. I mean, you know, Ernie Banks made it. Larry Fitzgerald, mm, he's going to end up being in the top 50 at some point, but I don't think he's there just yet. Barry Sanders, mm, you know what? Could be. I mean, it's hard to take away. He, he was a rushing leader at one point, you know, more than anyone else. Earl Campbell was a battler. That dude was a man. And he's paying for it now, unfortunately, with the CTE. Uh, but the greatest? Mm -mm. Now, here's mine. And I'm not going to get into tons and tons of stats because we could be here all night long. But there's some people who you should know about some of whom made this list and I'm gonna tell you who that is you know where they ranked on the other list and some who aren't on the list who definitely should be so let's start with Jesse Owens Jesse Owens came in at number five on the other list and it's hard to dispute that by the way my my list is not ranked I didn't even want to take that chance I have three athletes on this list who are some of my favorite people ever and you know what we're allowed to have that but I just mixed them in there so there you go. Anyway, Jesse Owens, what did he do? Jesse Owens won four gold medals. He had to win them in front of Hitler. And this was during the time where Hitler was talking about the superiority of the Aryan race. And so Jesse Owens went there, won four gold medals, and some of the people running the United States team did not want him even to compete. Come on, 
you know, imagine that kind of pressure. Didn't even want him in there because they were afraid he was going to insult the host. And then he ran one of four things. He actually holds another interesting record in the fact that he actually set three world records and tied one the year before while he was still in college. <laughs> and ESPN had ranked him at number six out of the top 20 athletes ever, uh, well, in the century, in the uh, 20th century. I always get my centuries wrong because I have to get we're now in the 21st century. Anyhow, Jesse Owens made number five on that list. He's on the, my top 15, no problems. Althea Gibson. Althea Gibson did not make the list at all. Who's Althea Gibson? She was the first black professional tennis player, period, men or women. She won the French Open the first year she joined, and this next year she won Wimbledon and the U.S. Nationals, which later became the U.S. Open. And this is back at a time where women weren't paid. So she's the only black woman in the Hall of Fame. Serena's going to be there someday, but she's not there yet. So Althea Gibson is the only one there right now. And... Because she couldn't make money playing tennis, she switched to professional golf. <laughs> and for five years, she was in the top 50 earners <clears throat> for golf for women. So there you go. She's got two sports. She's one of the first people who was inducted in the International Sports Hall of Fame for women. And she's in six other halls of fame. Althea Gibson. As a matter of fact, a lot of players, men and women in tennis, uh, look to Althea Gibson as an inspiration to them. You know, if you're an inspiration to others, you deserve to be in the top 15. Next on the list is Joe... No, I'm sorry. Next on my list, I think I skipped a couple. Let's go back. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson, number two on their list. Hard to beat number two. Jackie Robinson was very integral because organized sports did not allow black players and Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Yes, there were other players in other sports who did certain things, but Jackie Robinson in baseball, this is when baseball was king back in the late 1940s. I mean, baseball was such a major sport that there was obviously there was the black leagues, the Negro leagues. Then they were very popular. But, you know, you had players like, um, you know, the Black Leagues where they couldn't even stay in regular hotels. Jackie Robinson couldn't stay in hotels in a lot of places they went to. That just shows you how tough it was. I mean, Jackie Robinson is the trendsetter. trendsetter. Yeah, obviously, he was the first ballot Hall of Famer. And Jackie Robinson has his number retired by every single team in baseball. Hard to overcome something like that. Next on my list was Joe Lewis, number 23, on their list. Joe Lewis is in my top 15. Joe Lewis basically brought black boxers back into boxing. Uh, Jack Johnson made a lot of people's lists, and a lot of people were complaining that he didn't make the top 50, and I'm not so sure about him making the top 50 either, I'll tell you the truth, but he was great. However, Homeboy basically irked a lot of people. I think he was cheated out of his championship way back when, but... After that, they wouldn't let any black fighters fight for championships until Joe Lewis came along. Now, some people later on beat up Joe Lewis saying, well, you know, he kind of tommed his way into the hearts. No, he didn't. Joe Lewis did what he needed to do. He concentrated on boxing. He held his title for multiple years. Uh, the bum of the month club, <laughs> you know, Joe Lewis, he just changed. Without Joe Lewis, there is no one else who comes into boxing. Oh, well, maybe at some point. But Joe Lewis was really a big deal. And what some people don't know is that in his later years, he did, you know, try to advocate for civil rights. So Joe Lewis came around, but he came around during his time when he needed to. So that's the thing with Joe Lewis. Next on my list, Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain is one of my favorites. Wilt Chamberlain is my favorite basketball player of all time. And there's a whole lot, you know, that's hard. I mean, there is Michael Jordan. Okay, he, he's never really been one of my favorites, but I've always admired his game. There's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There's Magic Johnson. There's tons of people. My favorite is Wilt Chamberlain. Why Wilt Chamberlain? They changed rules because of Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain was so dominant that the NBA had to keep changing rules to make it fair for other players, and he still kicked butt. Wilt Chamberlain is the only professional basketball player to score 100 points in a game. He, let's see, he won seven scoring titles, 11 rebounding titles, nine field goal percentage titles, led the league in assists. <laughs> he did everything. He averaged 50 points a game one season. He averaged for his career 
over 30 points and 20 rebounds a game. I mean, no one else has ever touched that. He won two championships, but he was in the finals, what, I think seven times. Um, he won four Most Valuable Players. He was Rookie of the Year. He was the NBA, uh, the finals of an NBA, you know, uh, let's see, how do you say that? NBA Finals MVP. Whew, boy, that was difficult. He made 13 All-Star games. He was the first ballot Hall of Famer. And you know what? Wilt Chamberlain, he was bigger than life. He just was. Yes, he lost a lot of games to Bill Russell in championships. But, you know, one of the things that people are starting to learn, at least a little bit, is that it takes a team to win a championship. You can have one dominant player who can get you there, but teams win championships. Now, I've mentioned Wilt Chamberlain. Now we have to mention Bill Russell. Bill Russell came in at number 36. He's in my top 15. Bill Russell won 11 championships in 13 years, and he was coach and player for two of those years. It's hard to beat. <laughs> it just is. Bill Russell, for, for black people, he really was one of the early people who started talking about civil rights. Bill Russell played in Boston, but Bill Russell didn't take no mess from anybody. And after that, you saw him. He was on the campaign. He, he traveled with, with Malcolm X for a while. He traveled with Martin Luther King Jr. He has always been up front about minorities and fairness for, for everybody. And Bill Russell has never taken a step back to anybody. Bill Russell deserves to be in the top 15. Next on my list is Jim Brown. Really? You know what? The year after Jim Brown left college, Syracuse University, the area I live in, ended up having Ernie Davis become the first black player in college football to win the Heisman Trophy. However, if they hadn't been racist, Jim Brown would have won it the year before. Jim Brown was just that good. And in multiple sports at Syracuse University, his football, you know what, how do you compare anyone to Jim Brown? In what, I think it was nine years, I should have written a lot more of these things down, but you don't need to. In just like nine years, Jim Brown basically set the record that everyone else had to eventually reach as for most yards scored. Jim Brown was just dominant. Jim Brown beat people up. And then he left at the top of his game to go act. Jim Brown didn't have anything else that he had to do. And Jim Brown, also another guy who didn't take any mess. So he went on the civil rights thing. He's worked with empowering black people financially. He's done a lot of good things. There's a couple of personal things in his life, which is what takes him down off of being one of my favorite people that I don't support. But as far as athletes, Jim Brown, I'm sorry, Jim Brown, he makes the list of my top 15. Next on the list, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods didn't make the top 50. Now, this one has been kind of polarizing for some people, and I didn't understand why initially. And then it came down to a thing where, I guess, early on in his years, people were mad that he would not call himself black. He came up with some cavillation or whatever. I don't know. Everyone seems to have messed it up. But his mother was Asian. His father was black. He did not want to insult his mother. So, therefore, he said, well, no, I'm not totally black. And they didn't like it. But let's face the fact here. He's Tiger Woods. He is in the top three for most wins all time. He's won more money than anyone else of all time. Tiger Woods basically changed the sport of golf. He changed the finances of golf. Uh, Nike never would have got into golf unless Tiger Woods came along. And then when he left, Nike got out. <laughs> you know, come on. Tiger Woods was the most recognizable athlete at, you know, for, for, what, at least a decade or more around the world. Tiger Woods brought black people into playing golf, whether he wanted to take credit for it or not. He did some amazing things. How do you not put this guy in the top 50? Yes, he had a personal thing, but you know we're not talking about uh, the best people. <laughs> we're talking about the top you know, black athletes. Without Tiger Woods on this list, it almost makes the rest of the list null and void. Almost, because I still got 15 people total. Next on my list, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is just one of my favorite people. I, my goodness, 
you, you guys know what he did. He won the heavyweight championship three times. He lost his license when he decided he wasn't going to Vietnam, and he won. The Supreme Court basically said, y'all, stop messing with Ali. Muhammad Ali was once again known all over the world. Muhammad Ali was so well known, he was able to get Iran, when we were fighting with them, to give us <laughs> you know, some of the folks back that they had captured. I mean, this was Muhammad Ali. You know, he was the only one. He was Muslim. He talked to some folks. Ali, you're the man. We're going to send you some folks back. Muhammad Ali is the only person who was not a family member that I've ever had on a wall of mine. And this was in college. For four years in college, I had a picture of Muhammad Ali on my wall beating up Joe Frazier. You remember I mentioned Joe Frazier earlier? <laughs> That's why Joe may not make my top 50. Didn't like Joe. Like Joe, okay, you know, whatever, but top 50, no. But Muhammad Ali, most recognizable athlete, he's still big. He passed away last year. <sighs> Sad. But Muhammad Ali, definitely in my top 15. And by the way, he made number three on the other list. Next, Jackie Joyner Kersey. You young folks need to go find out some stuff about Jackie Joyner Kersey. Olympics. She won three gold medals. She won a silver. She won two bronze. She did that in four different Olympic uh, games. No other athlete has won medals in four Olympic games. She was voted the top female athlete, greatest female athlete of all time by Sports Illustrated. She still holds the world records for heptathlon and she holds six other records for Olympics and my goodness, the woman was just fantastic. She is one of those people who led the way for other athletes, you know, to be able to do some of the things that she did. Um, as a matter of fact, she now has an award named after her. There used to be the Jesse, uh, Jesse Owens Award for track and field, and then they decided, well, the women deserve one also. So in 2013, they named the award the Jackie Joyner Kersey Award. You know what? You get an award named after you. You need to be in the top 15, and she's not even on the other list. Next on my list, lady named Alice Coachman. Uh, Alice Coachman, and I'm going to give most of you a break for not knowing Alice Coachman because this is one of those kind of things where she probably doesn't get enough recognition from sports these days. She, from way back, as a matter of fact, back in the day, there were people who said that had she been able to be in the 1940 and 1944 Olympics, which were canceled because of World War II, it's possible that she would have been named the greatest female athlete ever. As it is, she won AAU championships in high... Let's see, let's see, let me get it right. She won AAU high jump championship 10 years in a row. Now, it was called Amateur Athletics Union. Remember, back then, you couldn't get paid to do any of these track and field sports like you can today. So basically, she won 10 years in a row. She probably would have won everything in the Olympics. Um, <laughs> you know, she was a track and field Hall of Famer. She made the Olympic Hall of Fame in 2004. Um, it's just, she was just someone who, if you ever had the opportunity to talk to a lot of black women who went into track and field later on, they looked at Alice Coachman as their inspiration. So once again, she inspired other people to get out there and do something. She needs to be in the top 15. Next on my list, Dominique Dawes. You know how we talked about Simone Biles earlier and Gabby Douglas? Y'all need to acquiesce and give tribute to Dominique Dawes. Dominique Dawes, first African-American woman that win an individual Olympic gold medal in gymnastics. She was the first black person of any national, uh, nationality to win a medal in gymnastics. She um, competed in three different Olympics, one medal in all three of them. Um, later on, after she left gymnastics, she was the president of the Women's Sports Federation for three years, and she was still pretty young at the time. Matter of fact, she was the youngest president in their history. She's on multiple boards now on fitness. Uh, Obama had appointed her to the co-chair of what was called the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. You know what? Homegirl had it all. Uh, okay, and she was gorgeous too. 
I'm not even going to lie. That's one of the prettiest women ever. Loved her. Serena Williams came in at number six. Y'all know what Serena's all about. She's won 23 career Grand Slams. She's been in 29. And these are singles. Total, she has won uh, 34 because they don't count the doubles. I'm sorry. She's won 37. Her and her sister have won 14. They've never lost playing doubles in the Grand Slam. Dag. Think about that for a minute. She's won a total of 100 titles, which includes one Olympic gold medal. She's earned over $84 million. She held the number one ranking for 186 consecutive weeks. Only Steffi Graf can tie that. Didn't beat it, but tied it. And talk about charitable organizations. She's on at least 12 or 13. She's in, you know, 12 or 13 charitable organizations, a couple of which she started. Come on. Serena is going to be the next black woman in the Hall of Fame. She's going to deserve it. And obviously, she made number six on the other list. I can't really disagree with that. Uh, next on my list, Warren Moon. Warren, Warren Moon did not make the top 50. Some of y'all may not know who Warren Moon is. Warren Moon, he's the only black quarterback in the NFL Hall of Fame. He's, he's it. Matter of fact, He's the only black quarterback in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> so this dude was a bad dude. He went undrafted. No one drafted him because, you know, back then, a lot of folks didn't draft black quarterbacks. So he went to Canada. In Canada, he won five Grey Cups. That's the big championship up there. He won five of those. Twice he was the MVP. He was the outstanding player in 1983. Then he came to the NFL he was Pro Bowl player nine times. He was the most valuable player in 1990. He was the man of the year in 1989. And he was the first ballot Hall of Famer. When he retired, he owned five records that it took many years before anyone got close to breaking and then finally did break. But this dude, he was within so much of winning a Super Bowl. Most hurtful thing ever. <laughs> And my last guy, Arthur Ashe, my, one of my three top favorite athletes ever. Arthur Ashe is the guy who got me into playing tennis when he won Wimbledon back in 1975. I hadn't really watched much tennis up to then, except for Chris Everett. Chris Everett was cute. Just, just tell it like it is. But I hadn't really watched anything. After Arthur Ashe won Wimbledon by beating Jimmy Connors when he wasn't supposed to, Went out, got a racket, and started playing and kicking people's behind because of Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe won three Grand Slams. He won 33 career titles overall. And this was way back starting out when men had trouble getting paid all that well. As a matter of fact, the uh, ATP, uh, geez, Association of Tennis Professionals, he was one of the supporters of that, and they actually boycotted Wimbledon one year. <laughs> a whole bunch of players boycotted Wimbledon, and he took heat for that. But you know what? Those boys started getting paid well after that, and they showed, you know what? You can't push players around. He played all around the world. He uh, advocated for civil rights, just like a lot of other athletes did at a certain point. Uh, he was the captain of U.S. Davis team a few times. Um, he's been arrested a couple of times for protesting for equal rights. And then he became the face of AIDS when he got AIDS during a transfusion. This is back in the 80s when AIDS was a death sentence. And he did pass away from it. But he did start the Arthur Ashe Foundation for the Defeat of AIDS and raised a lot of money for it. And unfortunately, you know, when he, he, was, he passed away, and then he was named, um, oh, goodness, what, what do you call it? He was named, he earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Goodness. You know what? This shows you I'm tired. I've taken this longer than I expected to. Anyway, those are my 15 greatest black athletes of all time. I hope you've watched at least some of this. I'm going to list the names down below so you can at least see the names of the people who I have as my top 15. Let me know your thoughts on this list. Let me know your thoughts on the ESPN list. I hope to get this out last week, but stuff came up, so I just couldn't get a video out. Anyway, that's me. Y'all let me know what you think. Hope you have a wonderful week.